You're watching Backyard Tech. Right from the outset, this news video is nothing to do with technology. For many decades, Victoria's mental health services have been less than average. But one thing is finally starting to happen and hopefully changes will come from it. It's news time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, the Andrews State Labor Government has finally launched a Royal Commission into Victoria's mental health services. From the Backyard Tech Channel, this is BYT News. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is BYT News time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Wednesday for midweek. And as I said at the beginning, this is not a tech related news video, but this does affect me on a personal level, also the other half as well. Victoria's mental health system is busted. It is a dead set in the Fed Income Department shambles. And too many times, governments across the state have done nothing about it. Well, finally, one good thing's happening from the Andrews State Labor Government, and that's a Royal Commission into Victoria's Mental Health Services. As you can see there, one of the AFL's greatest footballers, Wayne Schwoss, former North Melbourne footy player, great advocate for mental health was left busted and suicidal. So if you're not interested in this video, you might want to stop watching now. This is from National 9 News here in Melbourne. Mental Health Royal Commission. AFL great Wayne Schwoss broken and suicidal after the 1996 Premiership win. In the moments after his team, North Melbourne, won the 1996 AFL Premiership, Wayne Schwoss was thinking about ending his life. The image was one of happy and exuberant Premiership player celebrating the win, but for Schwoss, this is what suicide looks like. Quote, At the particular moment, I was thinking about how I could end my life, he told Victoria's Mental Health Royal Commission. Schwoss battled depression for, the mo for, the, for most of his 15-year football career playing for North Melbourne and Sydney, and now advocates for mental health awareness. He told the Royal Commission he hid his struggle with depression for more than 12 years due to a paralyzing fear about how people would react. Quote, I was trained to be very, a very good athlete, I wasn't trained to be a well-balanced individual, he said on the opening day of the inquiry's public hearings. Australia's former Trade Minister, Andrew Robb, Robb's battle, I'm sorry, with depression began when he was about 12, despite his very happy childhood. It hit him when he woke up one morning, quote, I called it my little black dog. It grew to a big black dog for the next 40 years. Close quote, Mr. Rob said today. Mr. Rob revealed publicly in 2009 he suffered from depression. I denied that I had a, depress a depressive condition, even to myself, for a long time. Quote, unquote. Both Swass and Mr. Robb spoke about the stigma attached to mental health. Quote, I think there's hundreds of thousands who just live with it and die with it, close quote, Mr. Robb said. Quote, in many cases, no one really knows about it, close quote. Ahead of its public hearings, the Royal Commission, the commissioners, I'm sorry, have heard about what Chair Penny Armitage described as the tra tragedies that, be, that being alive, hang on, let me start that one again. Ahead of its public hearings, the commissioners have heard 
about what Chair Penny Armitage describes as the tragedies that b being alive, what it means to have a broken system. Okay, that doesn't read right, but that might just be me. Quote, we have heard about people wanting to get help, to be told that they are not sick enough, even not suicidal enough to receive care, Ms. Armitage said. Close quote. Council assisting Nicholas Lisa Nichols, QC, said several witnesses would speak about the so-called quote unquote missing middle. The many thousands of Victorians whose needs are too complex for the primary care system alone, but not sick enough to obtain access to specialist mental health services. Miss Armitage said the Royal Commission into Victoria's mental health system was a once in a lifetime opportunity for reform. Quote, a clear message emerges, doing more of the same will not be enough, close quote, she said. Quote, the calling of this Royal Commission is also an acknowledgement that mental health, that the mental health system is broken. Close quote. Miss Armitage said one person had told the inquiry, quote, we don't want to fill, we don't want to fill in the potholes. We want a new road, close quote. The four commissioners have been struck by the evidence shared with them so far. Ms. Armitage said, particularly data showing young people are more likely to die by suicide than in a road incident. We find this evidence confronting that our young people, even very young people, are not enjoying good mental health and are increasingly experiencing high levels of distress, she said. I know what this is like. So does the other half. And I've got a few viewers here at the Backyard Tech Channel in the same boat. Mental Health Minister Martin Foley said the Victorian government established the first Royal Commission of its kind in Australia because it knew the system was broken. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. Now, I know I'm going to get a big backlash about this. As long as I've been on this earth... There has been a call for a Royal Commission into Mental Health Services across multiple governments in this state, Labor and Liberal. It's taken nearly 40 years of my life for this to come about. The system is busted, but no government has ever wanted to actually recognise the problem. Shadow Minister for Mental Health, Emma Keeley, MP, criticised the state government for not affording regional communities equal access. Keeley said the decision to hold one, hold one day of the Royal Commission hearings outside Melbourne denies, quote, regional communities the opportunity to give evidence, close quote. This is despite one third of Victorians seeking support for mental health services living in rural and regional areas, close quote, Keeley said. I'm sorry, this should have happened a long time ago. The stigma around mental health, both, well, I can really only talk about Victoria because I don't know what the stigma is around the rest of the country, but here in Victoria, the stigma is terrible. One quote from this that caught my eye reading this. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? I've got to find it again. It's down here somewhere. Yeah. Here. I'm in that. So is the other half. Often, and in some cases, I've mentioned this in the past, that areas of the public see mental health as just laziness i can tell you now it ain't that depression and anxiety is a big problem not just here in victoria but around the world 
the stigma against it is phenomenal. Now, I've got a couple of viewers here at the Backyard Tech channel and members of the Backyard Tech Facebook group who are in the same boat. It's happened to me. There's, there's been days where I haven't been able to cope. But the stigma around all forms of mental health is horrific. The state's mental health system has been broken for as long as I've been on this earth. You're shunned. You're treated like uh, you shouldn't be seen. The Liberal government never admitted it. The previous Labor governments that we've had in the state for as long as I've been on this earth have always said, we'll, we'll, we'll make the following adjustments. Mental health minister has come out and said that whatever the Royal Commission wants, the government will adopt. The proof will be in the pudding, unfortunately. If you suffer from mental health issues, there is no reason you should be shunned, both by the bureaucrats, the medicos, and the general public. Earlier this year, an up and coming North Melbourne footy star, Mad Jack Daw, tried to take his own life off the Balti Bridge. He had to learn to walk again. His mental health got so bad. Here you are, a brilliant footy player. There's no reason why areas of the community can't get their head around those that suffer from depression, anxiety, bipolar, and other mental health conditions. The stigma is terrible, but at the same time, people sometimes don't know where to turn to. The road ahead is murky. Wayne Schwartz said it himself. I didn't want to appear weak. And this is the stigma. But there are other areas of the community that see this depression and anxiety as just being dead set in the fair income department. Lazy. Oh, he's just being a lazy sod. He just doesn't want to do it. He, he's fine. Don't worry about it. Give him a beer. He'll be right. No. No, he won't be. No, she won't be. Whatever you want to call it. This should have happened a long time ago. And finally, we're getting somewhere. Um, you know, can guarantee it, old mate's going to keep an eye on this Royal Commission because I, it affects me. It affects me, not just as an Aussie, it affects me as a Victorian. Yes, it should be outside the Melbourne metropolitan area. It should be all over the state, but at least this is a step in almost the right direction. Filling in the potholes won't work. We need to completely wipe the road out, start again. Because the way the system is at the moment, I to add insult to injury as well with this, and to make it more murky, the NDIS is stuffed as well. Absolutely stuffed. Mental health should be seen as a disability. Now, I'm not ad I'm not saying that, you know, it should be at the same level of someone who's got a physical disability, but it should be recognized as a disability. And under no circumstances should anyone who suffers from mental health problems be shunned by the general public, let alone parts of the bureaucracy. 
Wayne, look, I'm not a North Melbourne player, but I know for a fact Wayne Schwoss was an excellent footballer. How is that? You win the grand final, and the only thing going through your head is not the fact you've won the grand final, it's how you want to kill yourself. For too long, Melbourne, Victoria's mental health system has been busted. And, you know, it's taken nearly 40 years of my life for something to happen about this. Now, not only do I have depression and anxiety, borderline, I should be getting other care. We're not going to go down there. I have ADD as well. Not ADHD, just ADD. So, you know, I'm not a simple case. The other half, she has depression and anxiety. Her mother has it. My old man had it. The problem you also get, okay, and this is common as well, is how do you tell someone to get help? I, I went and got it off my own bat. But sometimes people ignore the fact because they don't want to be seen as weak. They don't want to be seen as lazy, which parts of the general public see mental health problems such as depression and anxiety as being, oh, he's just a lazy old bugger. He just doesn't want to do anything. No. What's going on in here? It's a chemical imbalance in the brain, okay? That is well documented medically. But you do have people, it's very hard to tell someone to go and get help because doing that for both men and women can be a sign of weakness and that's what's got to change. It's not a sign of weakness. This is the stigma that needs to be smashed out of the park. Hit for six. Deep left field, up into the bleachers, whatever terminology you want to use for cricket, baseball, whatever. Kick for a goal in Aussie rules. Try converted, rugby league, whatever analogy you want to use. This had to happen. And finally, we're getting some there. Now, depending on how the Royal Commission pans this out, okay, depending on how the Royal Commission pans this out and recommends things, the Labor government has come out and said it will do what the Commission says. I'll wait to see that personally. There we are. Enjoy your Wednesday, guys. Cheers.